All right, so today we're gonna to be doing a video once again on the GXP. I hope it turns out right. I got the mount on my head for this one, a little POV style. What to expect slash what to look for when buying a GXP. Cause there's, there's a bit of stuff you wanna know before you go into it, what to look for, and you know what to expect when you buy it. A little bit of bad, a lot of bit of good. Let's get into it. is just dumped right now underneath the back seats because of the last video go check that video out if you guys want to know why I don't have any exhaust tips uh, definitely go check that video up I talked about getting new rims that are being custom ordered um, go check out that one and uh, let's focus on this one finally after two years of having this car I'm getting my new wheels and my new wheels and uh, it's gonna be awesome and I'm just gonna go up from there with mods but yeah, it's a good idle. What do you look for when buying this car? So when you're going to look at one or doing your research, know that these have the transmission out of the Grand Prix GTP and just the base. So it's not meant to handle the torque and power of the V8. Therefore, transmission issues happen quite often. So look for one with a rebuilt transmission, a new transmission. Um, if, it, if it's the original transmission, nothing done to it. Just be aware that something could happen. I would definitely still buy the car if, as long as it's driving good. Because there's a lot of people out there say, you know, if, if you drive it good, the transmission is going to last. You know, it's not going to go out. But if you drive it pretty hard, you know, then it's going to go out because it's not meant to handle the power. But, you know, um, and I mean, even so, don't let that stop you from buying this car. So what? A lot of cars have different like transmissions or transmissions that aren't that good, if you will. Don't let it stop you, man. You can always rebuild the transmission. You can always replace the transmission. Don't let the transmission stop you from buying this car is what I'm trying to say. Mine has been crazy reliable, crazy, like just very reliable. Um, a lot of people say, you know, just look for the trend. That's the issue with these cars. Um, you know, so just do your research. If the car drives good when you test drive it, buy it. You know, if it's slipping and stuff, just get the price down and then put a new transmission in it or move on to one that's not, I guess. But don't let that stop you. Um, they do have a tendency to have faulty sensors like ABS light sensors, um, the ABS and traction control, wheel speed sensors, you know, that stuff. Oil pressure sensors, stuff like that, which is all, you know, minimalistic stuff. You know, it's small, just replace it, you know. Most of the time, it's not even like the wheel bearing or anything that's bad, it's the sensor. So just sensors and the transmission, and then they have the deplacement on demand, which I will pop the hood here and show you guys. I'm sure a lot of you know of it. Yeah, when the car's remote started and you pop the hood, it kills. So just, just so you guys know that. I do not have my cover. Uh, it comes with an engine cover. It says 5.3 liter V8 active fuel management. Um, active fuel management, it just like kicks off for the cylinders that kind of like hibernate once you're you know, cruising to save gas. But the downside of that, it saves gas, but it takes oil. And uh, that's why these cars go through a ton of oil. So, I mean, really, most people, when you get this car, we recommend you get a tune. I haven't even gotten a tune yet. Um, I'm running stock or whatever the previous owner had. And um, see, mine's pretty clean under here. You know, the strut towers are pretty clean. I'm, I'm pretty lucky. And when I bought the car, I didn't even really look under the hood barely. I just kind of inspected it really quick. I didn't know much about cars when I got this two years ago. Um, so I was lucky. I just impulse bought it because it sounded really awesome. <laughs> That's why I bought it. I knew what it was, and I was uh, it was a really good deal. You know, 109,000 miles. It's now at 178, give or take a few. So I drive it a lot, two years. Two years as of last month. But the active fuel management, you know, it's, it's good for gas, but bad for oil. And when it kicks on, your car makes a really weird noise, you know, coming from the exhaust. Sounds like crap. It's a loud noise. Uh, it's really annoying. It happens whenever it kicks on and off so frequently i don't know it's annoying i'm getting mine tuned out and like if you remove the catalytic converter or something you know and your engine lights on if you're or if that's stopping you from removing your cat for a better sound um just know you, when you get a tune like a dyno tune or something they can tune the engine light out they can tune out the dod which is what i'm getting done the dod deleted um i hate it um i'd rather just because the money that you're saving in gas you just have to put back in with oil anyways so it doesn't even matter like so i believe it's six quarts of oil in this car and when I get an oil change, I believe I use mobile one. Um, 5W30 is what it takes. 
but um, about halfway, a quarter to halfway through the oil change, it'll say low oil. I'll check, it'll be almost out of oil. About halfway through, so about 1,000 miles, 1,500 miles, it'll be almost out of oil. You know, so it, it guzzles oil. And it's nothing wrong with the car, it's just the DOD. So just be aware to either get the DOD turned out or just not mind putting more oil in the car and saving a little bit more gas. Um, so yeah, I mean, I get pretty good gas with the car for the big V8 that it's got. Sure, it has 303 horsepower stock. Um, I'm probably about 305, I don't know, with my straight pipes and my high flow cat, 305, 310, who knows. Um, but a lot of stuff coming for the car, so definitely subscribe to the channel. It's an awesome car. It gets pretty good gas. I don't really know what gas I'm getting because my screen is reading bad. I have to disconnect my battery and reconnect it, but I don't want to reset my clock and all my radio settings and all that, so I'm not even going to bother for now. But I'm assuming I get anywhere around 20 miles to the gallon average, which I think is pretty good. I mean, I, I drive almost every day. Yeah, I pretty much drive every day and I just cruise around. I, I accelerate pretty hard a lot. I fill up my gas tank probably once a week, uh, once every seven days. So sometimes I'll top it off in between because I have OCD and I like it to be full. If it goes below half, I usually fill it. Um, but it usually takes about half a tank for a whole week and then I fill it up. So not even a full tank, just half a tank. So it's pretty good. I probably, I'm saying I'm probably getting about 290 to 300 miles per tank. So it's doing pretty good. Um, I do a lot of driving, a lot of back to Brainerd. I'm in St. Cloud, so that's an hour driving back. A lot to the cities and back. I like to look at cars. I like to drive cars. I like to test drive cars. You know, I'm, I'm a car dude, but uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's a cool car. It looks good. Like I said, it's got the big V8 with the transmission that's not meant to handle the power. Nothing against the transmission. It's just not meant for this. They should have did something different, beefed it up, gave it a different transmission. Um, you know, this was their performance. One of the, this was one of GM's performance cars while the Camaro was gone. The engine's there, but not the transmission. So, um, It's front-wheel drive. Um, just know that when you're buying it. So it's pretty good in the winter. Not like all-wheel drive, obviously, but it's pretty good. It's much better than it would be if it was rear-wheel drive. Um, it's got 18-inch rims. I don't know if you guys care about wheels, but they're decent wheels. Um, I really like the forged Alcoa wheels that the 05 and 06 come with. Um, the 07 and 08 come with these ones. They're like the, they're like those, but they don't. You, you'll notice they don't have like the rivets or screws in between, and they're a little bit different. Um, the forged ones look a lot better, but you know I got the cheap ones. So that's why I really don't care about them. But it sits pretty low. It sits like a cockpit. Beware of that if you have back problems. Um, it does have lumbar support and all that good stuff. It's really cool. It's a comfortable car for how low it is, for how much of a sports car it is. It's really comfortable. Um, it's a cool car. Um, there's not really much else to look out for besides faulty sensors and the transmission and then be aware that it has the DOD, which some people like the DOD. I mean, it's no big deal. It's, it can be good if you don't mind putting a little bit extra oil in. You know, just always check your oil because it eats oil. And um, most of them come with a sunroof, which is good. Mine didn't. Another thing is to be aware, uh, the interior is all right, but um, it's got decent materials on the door, but like the plastics in here, they're the cheapest of the cheap plastics. They creak and rattle and it's a, it gets pretty annoying but that's only if you have a higher mild one you know the I've driven a couple lower mild ones and they were really quiet which was awesome um, if you don't have an exhaust if it runs factory the car runs really quiet which is really cool you know the engine sounds great when you accelerate but when you're on the highway nothing it's, it's great you know no road noise in here I'm, I'm pretty good it comes with really nice um, but by the way that's the materials I just want to tell you about that so be aware of that. You may have to replace like the center console lid if you're going to keep it for a while, which I have to replace. But I'll be wrapping everything really in Alcantara anyways. Um, another thing in here, well, it's got the it's got somewhat bigger brakes. Bilstein struts, you can't really see that because it's on my head. But yeah, it's got Bilstein struts, which are really good. They're top of the top. They're very nice. And you know, they're, they're a good ride and they're, they're pretty strong, but when they, and then oh, my car is rusting a little bit. It's starting to bubble right there. I'm gonna have to get that fixed. But you know, that's Minnesota for you. My car is always gonna have some rust. And then this common issue right here with these, you need to look out for this, the clear coat peels, and then it'll start to rust right here on both sides. Uh, mine started from here all the way up to here. I repaired it like a year ago, but it's starting to come back through again because I did a crappy job. I just did it quick. So that's a common thing with these cars. Don't let it worry you. It's just, you know, it's not bad. You can fix it. Just wash the car, you know, take care of it, just like any car. But I mean, really, my maintenance is, has been very little. A lot of people complain about these cars, lots of things going wrong. You just have to buy one that's been taken care of. You know, that's the thing. Just buy one that's been taken care of. A lot of people are complaining about things going wrong. They're buying them that have 
either high miles or low miles, but the low mile ones are beat on. Or the high mile ones are very good and everyone's like, well, my high mile one's great because the owner took care of it. That's the thing, I'm I take care of this car. Something goes wrong, you fix it. The only thing I haven't fixed that's gone wrong is my struts are kind of bad now, but it's given to the stock struts and the car has 178,000 miles. But I'm waiting because I'm getting BC racing coilovers so I can drop it about an inch and a half, two inches, so. Um, the car is about, I think it's like around 35, 3,600 pounds. Not, not a tank, but not, not light. It's not a car that you throw around corners. It does have body roll. It's a car more, I'd say, for cruising. Kind of like a, kind of like a Mustang, I guess, Charger. It's, it's a front wheel drive Charger. It's a little quicker than a Charger RT. Um, that's essentially what it is, in my opinion. It's four doors, you know, V8, but it's the front wheel drive. Charger's rear wheel drive, so you could probably have a little more fun in the Charger, to be honest. The Charger has more horsepower, but it's a bit heavier, actually quite a bit heavier. So this car does pull a little bit harder than the Charger if you're looking for, you just want, want performance. Um, or if you're looking for just a nice Grand Prix, this is the one for you. It's special, it gets lots of looks. Um, a lot of older guys who, you know, GM, Pontiac, they grew up with them. The GTOs and stuff, they love this car. I get so many questions. Is this a, is this a V8? Is this supercharged? What is it? No one knows what it is and it's awesome. Um, it's, a, it's very much a sleeper if you don't put an exhaust on it. I get so many car people trying to race me and then I beat them. It's, it's fun and I'm a good sport, you know, obviously I love racing and I love getting beat because, it, I don't know, I just love racing, I love meeting other car people and um, when I get beat I give them a thumbs up, tell them it's a sweet car. Um, I don't get salty like a lot of the people do on the forums and stuff, it's, it's just not right, you know, you're out there having fun. You're gonna win, you're gonna lose, it's, it is what it is. To be honest, I don't know what happened here, it looks like someone like hit my fender. You see that? It looks like it got bent in, and then this that's why that chipped and started to rust. Huh. I've never noticed that, and I've detailed my car before, and it's like cracking right here. Hmm. I just have to do some repair on that. That's not going to be too hard. But um, Yeah, overall, my car is in pretty decent condition. A couple door dings here and there. And when you get this car, like I said, expect a lot of people to ask you questions. A lot of guys, not really much girls. I've had some girls tell me they really like it, and then it sounds cool. Um, I've had a couple girls tell me it looks different than their Grand Prix because it very much does. It sits lower. I think it's like an inch and a half lower. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's obviously got the Bilstein struts. It's a lot different and better than the regular Grand Prix, but the regular Grand Prix are still awesome. You know, the 3800 is still a cool engine. Um, if you can't afford the GXP, which um, it's, I mean, you can get them for five grand and clean, you know, just look. Um, my favorite color on these is black. This is my second favorite color. Uh, I wanted black, but you know, I'm making this work. And it's just a cool car. They come with a bigger wing, uh, bigger wheels and tires, uh, different suspension, which is a lot better. It's a little bit lower. The doors are the same as the regular Grand Prix. Different front end, different, obviously bigger quad exhaust, and then the engine. And it's, it's a cool car. It's got a lot of practicality too. You can fit a lot of stuff back there. Here's one of my exhaust tips. The other one's in my garage. Actually trading those today, so that's going to be cool. But yeah, a lot of practicality. It's a great car, good trunk space. Uh, it comes factory with remote start. That's a big plus. So yeah, um, if your engine light is on, the factory remote start will not work until the engine light is gone. So like you can clear the code and then you'll, it'll work again until the code comes back on. So. Um, engine lights, they're common with these cars, and 90, I'd say 90% of the time, it's pointless. It's just a sensor, or it's just like something like your O2 sensors go bad. You know, it's most of the time, it's not really your engine. Um, the lifters in this car can tick sometimes, uh, keep the oil up, you know, just run, run premium gas in these cars. Highly recommended, especially the boosted, the GTP, that takes premium only. Uh, I run premium in this and it runs great. When I put 87 in this car, my lifters like to tick a lot when it's cold. Um, it's a good car in the snow. You can see I got a lot of snow. It's already melted about half of it, but good car as long as you, you know, you gotta have good tires just like on any car. But I have Firestone wide ovals in the back. I have Falcon something in the front, you know, I'm good. I plow through snow, dang near a snow plow. And it's got, the, it's got enough power. I recommend driving with traction control off in the winter because you know, if you're getting stuck in the snow, you need that power to get through it, and the traction control limits it. Um, but it's a great car, you know, really cool. 
It's a great conversation starter with you know car enthusiasts. A lot of people like it. A lot of the mainstream car enthusiasts will hate on these. It's just the truth because they don't like Pontiac. I don't know why. I mean, stock for stock, this car is faster than STIs, um, faster than Charger RTs, you know, stuff like that. It's faster than them. I've raced it, personal experience. I don't have it on video, but I mean, you can think I'm lying. I really don't care. It's just personal experience. That's why I say it because, you know, I mean, it's awesome. And if you get one of these, definitely go on LS4 forums um, and you'll get accepted to the group, the LS4 Nation on Facebook. Um, a lot of good people on there will help you out, you know, it's it's a great car um, Not really much else to talk about there you guys the side is okay. <laughs> Just haven't walked over there, but yeah, the car is awesome There's a decent amount of aftermarket stuff for this car. It is an LS engine um, You know, you can do headlights front splitter, you know a different grill you can do the different tail lights you can do suspension, you know performance mods tuning um, there's a couple turbo kits for this, like the car tuning turbo kit, which is my end goal for this car. Like my real goal is I want to get a Pro Charger for this car. I want to work with Pro Charger and see if they can make something for this car. Um, I know they've done that before with people, like they've, you know, they've shipped their car out to Pro Charger and they've fabricated something and made a kit for it. Um, I'd really like to do that. You know, that'd be awesome. It'd probably be about 10 grand is my guess. Like, I really want to get a Pro Charger for this car. Um, but when the time comes when I have the money for that, I'll start um, trying to get in contact with Pro Charger and seeing what they can do. And they would install it. Pro Charger would. I would, you know, have the car shipped there with them. And, and do know, by the way, the rear wheels are smaller than the front wheels. I believe they're 18 by 7 in the back and 18 by 8 in the front. Correct me if I'm wrong. Something like that. Or 18 by 7 and a half in the back. Something like that. Um, the front ones look really good. The back look a little small. I wish they were a square setup. I don't like the staggered setup. My new wheels I ordered are uh, square setup. But yeah, so that's about the thing. I, I want the turbo kit, but I'd really want a Pro Charger. So that'd be something cool to kind of work out with Pro Charger. I'm sure they'd want to do it. I'm sure there's a great aftermarket for the car. I mean, it's not really a handling car, but it doesn't handle all that bad, you know. I mean, you just got to get some suspension on it and you'll be good to go. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much going to be it for the video, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're planning on buying one of these, if you have one, what you like about it. Um, leave the negativity out of the comments, what's going on, what's wrong with it. So many people are always saying what's wrong with these. It's because they get beat on, you know. Buy one that's been taken care of or buy one that's been beat on and restore it, you know. Peace out, guys. I'll see you in the next one. I wonder what went wrong today, eh? Why do I feel like I linger? Linger between the words to say, eh? To say the words you remember. Now we're here to take control.